<laughs> oh my, the FAL is a lot of fun. You know, I used to prefer the SMR, the other semi-automatic assault rifle, but I've been playing more with the FAL, and I've really got to enjoy it. It's been my go-to gun for a while now in a lot of situations. And when the FAL isn't up to the job, well, that's what C4 is for. <laughs> So I guess it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to me that both League Play and MLG have banned the FAL. It's just a little bit surprising that they do that, and then Treyarch, who's in charge of League Play, still hasn't rebalanced the FAL. And I guess that just says something about the... that if you have the skills to use this gun well, to fire the trigger quickly, to get on target, to make those shots count, it is devastating. Uh, I am certainly not using it to its full effect, uh, but I will say this, I never feel like the FAL is the reason why I lost a gunfight. It's always because I missed my shots, because I didn't pull the trigger fast enough, or because I just wasn't ready for the gunfight. Uh, it, it's in a lot of cases with, you know, an SMG, if you're trying to use it at range, it's, oh my gosh, this thing has so much recoil, I can't... With the FAL, it never feels like it's the gun that's the reason why I lost a firefight. So as you can tell, the way I like to run the FAL is with the red dot and the stock. Although the dot, instead of the red dot, I use the blue circle. I feel like it makes me more accurate when I'm trying for those really, really long shots so I can see exactly where I'm aiming at. It really helps on the long distance shots, especially I saw in that first clip there on Meltdown, where guys are just charging me, and I can just gun them down with uh, more accurate fire at longer ranges. And that's where this thing really excels, just be able to strafe in and out of cover uh, when they don't expect it and have the shot already lined up. I mean, that's just, that's my way I love to use this gun. Uh, it's very similar, but just a little bit different from how I like to use my M27 class that I showed off a while ago that I like to run with a silencer and extended mags. That class is always about being a little bit sneaky, but still having some range. This one's just loud, uh, run in there, charge in, and get what work I can done. And because of that, I also like to uh, run Tac Mask on the FAO class, which I don't normally run on my Silenced M27 class. But at least that's what's been working for me. There's just something about showing up on the minimap that seems to draw the ire of a few more tactical grenades. Uh, if, if I keep my distance, I usually have less to worry about uh, from lethals, as most people run C4, uh, or you can you know, get out of the way of the, uh, the other grenades. So, uh, tack mask for the unsilenced FAL with a stock and a red dot. It's, like I said, that's been working really, really well for me. And uh, in a lot of cases, especially where I want range and a lot of mobility and I want to be aggressive, uh, this is my go-to setup. And now, as to the question, is the FAL overpowered? Uh, I'm really not sure how to answer that. Uh, Treyarch obviously doesn't think it needs changing in the regular playlists, but then they go and ban it in League Play. And they put out another balancing patch already that made some changes to sniper rifles and the AN-94, another assault rifle, and the FAL remained untouched. So I guess the real question is, I mean, they're not banning it for being bad, we'll put it that way. Uh, why are other guns have a similarly high skill ceiling so that uh, really good players can make use of those? Uh, you just, is it just limited to uh, assault rifles and well, maybe it had been uh, sniper rifles too? So I was trying to come up with uh, other mechanics that they could use that would make for similarly high, very high skill ceiling guns. And the thing I kept coming back to was that Call of Duty has this real thing where uh, you trade uh, how obvious you are uh, so uh, versus uh, damage. It's essentially been the stopping power versus uh, UAV jammer all the way back from COD 4, or the unsilenced versus silenced weapons. And so I was trying to come up with ways uh, here. For example, if you remember the Spartan laser in Halo, uh, especially Halo 3, uh, you had to hold down the trigger for a while, and it also gave away your position and where you were targeting because that laser flashes all the way across the map. Uh, something charged like that would... Uh, that you really had to be ready for the gunfight and maybe gave away your position too it would change for a really really powerful uh, kind of shot i don't think you could implement the spartan laser directly into call of duty but ideas like that uh, might result in some more interesting weapons that uh, you know could also have some very high skill ceilings so that really good players wouldn't have to see uh you know i don't know they make it so they don't just ban weapons and then say, well, well we're not going to rebalance it, but we are going to ban it from this depth. So, I don't know. <laughs> That's 
That was just a few, uh, I was trying to just rationalize why they would go about banning something and then not changing it. Anyway, at the end here I have a clip that I was fairly happy with. It's not impressive by a lot of standards, but it is the kind of reason why we win a lot of demo games. And it's me pushing one bomb on offense on my own, basically one on three with the FAL, and keeping three guys busy so that my teammates can go play five on three on the other side of the map uh, and go ahead and take that bomb out. Uh, as I said, I uh, die a lot. It shows off how useful Tackens are in uh, Demolition, although <laughs> if, you, if you play Demolition, you probably are already well aware how useful Tackens are. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let this roll and let you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.